this is the Sega Can Gamer, and you are live with the MMA Home! Mixed Martial A-Holes! MMA Gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope everyone is wonderful, wonderful. We have some stuff to talk about. Uh, Steven Thompson getting knocked out. Crazy fight over there with Anthony Pettis. Yeah. We have some UFC news. We have MMA news. We mm. have fight weeks all over the place. CES 55 is right around the corner. And what better way to talk about CES 55 than to have no other, the one and only, Matt Bissett Oh, uh, you should have drum rolled it. No, do you, no it's too late now. Roll. Now, here we go. Say the one and only. The one and only. <laughs> Matt Bissett live with the MMA holes. Matt, what's going on, man? What's going on, dude? What an introduction. Oh, my God. The music was ridiculous. <laughs> Who created that? Uh, uh, two years ago, we started this channel, and um, I was like, let's start a channel about cringe. Cringe and MMA. That's what we're going to do here. We're going to have fun. Let's talk about MMA and have some fun. And, uh, yeah. This is a flying circus, and welcome to the flying circus. Yeah, but what's that? The, the, the intro is definitely cringeworthy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we, we did it. We did it, Jess. Jess, maybe wow. we did it. All right, so, Matt, thank you for coming on. Uh, CES 55 is this weekend. I've been meaning to have you on for a long time. We've had your buddy Nick Newell on. Uh, we've had a lot of guests on this show. But I, I speak to the people from CES, uh, and all they do is speak very highly about you. I've seen you on the Contender Series, Bellator, UFC, you have some story, and um, now we finally have you here. So it's like, I don't know. I feel good about this, Jesse. How do you feel? I I'm always feel wonderful, 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 wonderful. Oh, okay. So Jesse's feeling wonderful, wonderful. Matt, welcome to the show. Now, okay. This week we have a big fight coming up, CES 55. Um, tell us a little bit about this fight, your preparations, and how are you feeling in fight week? Uh, well, I've been preparing for the past 12 years, um, so I I got a leg up on the competition because I've been preparing for a long time. <laughs> um, uh, you know, it's uh, every fight's just a little bit different. You know, it's just all about, um, you know, uh, fixing the puzzle and, and, and finishing the puzzle when you're in there. Um, I can, I see what he can do. Um, I'm sure he still is just, you know, uh, you know, touching the, the, the iceberg um, with his talent and his abilities. So, um, I feel like there's probably a lot more that he can dish out. So it's just about, you know, keep my hands up, uh, be the fighter that I know I can be, go out there and um, do what I can do. Now, to those of you that don't know who Matt is, I mean, where have you been? Matt has been all over the place. He's literally fought everywhere. Um, and your story is something else. Uh, I was speaking to Louis Serrano from uh, CES, and he's like, man, you got to ask him about his story. Uh, the First of all, let's let's back up. How did you get into the sport of mixed martial arts? Uh you know what? I was, um, I'll, I'll, I'll back it up even more. Uh, I got leukemia when I was about two and a half, um, roughly three years old. And, uh, you know, for the first like third of my life, I was in and out of the hospital very regularly. I, I lived there for quite a t quite some time, um, with, uh, receiving chemotherapy. Uh, so, you know, I was always fighting, whether I was fighting for my life, um, or, uh, being picked on by my older brother and his friends and in physical fights or, you know, fights at school or something like that. I, I was always fighting. And um, for whatever reason, could not tell you why other than the fact that it was just something that came natural to me, like the idea of being in a physical fist fight. Um, it's just always been fun. 
Well, so, that's, I mean, uh, I, I got into fighting because it was fun. And, uh, you know, we kind of started like this, like backyard brawling thing in the town that I grew up in. Um, and it was like, uh, let's meet after school and throw some boxing gloves on and beat the crap out of each other. Um, and then I found out that MMA was an actual thing. And I was like, I want to start training this. And then, you know, like a month or two into it, I was like, I got to fight. I got to figure this out. I got to go somewhere that's going to get me a fight. Um, and I want to be somewhat prepared for this. So I met Kip Kolar, the president of Naga and reality fighting. And uh, it was like the first day I trained there. Um, I was like, cool. I like this. Um, can you get me a fight? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'll find you a fight. What's your name again? I'm like, Matt Bissett. He's like, okay, I'll figure something out. What weight? I was like, yeah, probably 155. And uh, that was it. Man, and, and man, what a story you've had, you have so far. And it's still going over here. 22, 9 and 0. Uh, fighting for Bellator, fighting for the UFC. I most people probably recognize you from the Contender Series. Uh, it didn't go the way you wanted it to go, but next thing you know, you're thrown into the UFC, fighting over there as well. Tell us the story of the Contender Series and what your experience with the Ultimate Fighting Championship is. Um, I think my experience was great. You know, uh, aside from not getting a W while I was there, everybody treated you very well. Um, they're a well-oiled machine. And uh, they are, you know, everything they claim to be. Um, everybody does their job. Everybody's extremely professional. I didn't run into one person that was mean by any means. Everybody's very nice. Um, um, you can confront anybody and ask them any question, and nobody, nobody kind of looks down at you. They're they're kind of at your beck and call, and it's it's really cool. Um, that being said, um, with the contender series. Uh, my, I don't know if you know, but what was the, I don't know the, the timeline, but it was like, I got the call to fight for the contender series. First of all, uh, before I got the call, I was told by Sean Shelby that he didn't want me on the contender series because he wants me to fight straight in the UFC. And I was like, awesome. I don't know. 48 hours later, he tells me, uh, we got to fight for you in the contender series. And I was like, all right, now I got to fight one more time to prove that I'm UFC worthy. And he's like, and you're going to fight uh, Kurt Hollibaut. And I'm like, okay. So another guy that's fucking obviously should be in the UFC, a uh, guy that's probably much bigger than me. This is going to be awesome. Let's do it. Whatever. Uh, so you can't say no to that, right? Sure. Um, so took the fight on like four weeks notice. Um, and like the day after I took the fight, I, I get – no, it wasn't the day after. Yeah, I end up like flying out uh, a week later to Vegas to do all the medicals and stuff. And you know, I'm out there, uh, get all the medicals done, and then I come back. The following day, I come back. I get something in the mail that says um, they need to check out uh, my MRI, uh, my my head scan, um, not my MRI, my, my head scan, my CAT scan, uh, because it looks like I have something going on. And uh, you know, fast forward a tiny bit. Uh, apparently, I have encephalomalacia with slight gliosis. And the reason I can remember those names exactly, you're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> yeah. The reason I can remember those names is because it was drilled into my head for like three, four days straight. Like, oh my God, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. Mm. Um, there was a, uh, an overreading um, on the, on the actual scans and the radiologist who read it was completely wrong. Um, so for three, four days, I was, pretty much being told that I would not only would I never fight again, but there's a really good chance that my life was going to be much shorter than I had had planned, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so like this was like, Oh man, it was, it was a lot. It was, it was a lot emotionally on me. Um, it was hard to like keep training at that point. Um, so I took like a few days off and, um, uh, I, I get a, my, my neurologist, the, one of the best neurologists, neurologists in the, in the country, um, he checked it out and he's like, he gives me a call and he's like, yo, Matt, I'm uh, checking out these scans. And he's like, I, this is bogus. This is really bogus. He's like, you're fine. Um, I don't know who would, who would say these things based upon these findings, but I'm going to call them and see what they think they see. And I'll get back to you. But as of now, you're good to go train for Hollywood. And I was like, Ugh. yeah. So it was like a huge weight lift off my shoulders. Um, you know, I'm, I'm back to training about three weeks later. I fight, um, the, the guy wrapping hands doesn't wrap my thumb. Um, and the one and only time my thumb doesn't get wrapped for a fight, I my first punch I throw, 
uh, I turned it over a little bit too much because he was further away. Mm. I got low battery. Um, sorry. Um, he was further away, and I broke my thumb right off the top of his head. So, oh, jeez. Yeah, within the first punch I threw. So after that, it was like, okay, can't use my right hand at all. Not only could I not punch with it, I couldn't grab with it. And, you know, through the whole rest of the fight, I'm thinking, this sucks, this sucks, this sucks. And it hurt a lot. So mm, man, it, was, oh, man. It, was, it was a shitty experience. <laughs> you must have been like, I can't catch a break. I can't catch a break yeah. here. Every time I'm yeah. on top of the heap, all of a sudden I get knocked back down again. I mean, now, thankfully, this wasn't anything serious over here. But uh, how do you shake that off? How do you shake the cobwebs out and, and just go for it? Do you just fight or flight or... Um, what do you mean in the fight after your thumb breaks? Yeah. I mean, what do you do like in a situation like that? Um, pretty much, uh, right away I knew that, okay, I don't have a right hand. So I was just like, I got to finish this fight like as soon as I can, uh, or else I'm going to be finished. Mm -hmm. Um, even if it puts me in harm's way, like there's no way I'm going to go two rounds with, with one hand, with one hand. Like I, I felt every part of it. Um, I didn't have jitters for that fight. Um, and it didn't help me out when I broke my thumb because I felt every part of it. Mm. You know, sometimes you have those jitters and you're like, you don't, you get hit in the face and you really don't feel it or you get kicked in the leg, you really don't feel it much. I didn't have those. Mm. So um, I felt that thumb break. So wow. right away I was like, man, I got to get in the thick of things and just try to end this right now and just kind of bang out, bang out with Halba. And uh, it turned out not well for me. And, you know, it is what it is at this point. Now the contender series happens and then you must have been, I mean, you must have been completely bummed out here, but then all of a sudden, boom, you get a call on short notice. And it seems like every time they drag you into the UFC, it's just like, ah, we need someone to fill in. Come on, come on over here, Matt. Let's, uh, let's get a fight going. How do you prepare for something like that? Being thrown into the fire, uh, two times after the contender series. Yeah. You don't prepare for it. You better be prepared (laughs) because you can't prepare for a fight in six days notice. You just Mm -hmm. cut weight. And uh, usually I cut like from 158-ish, 158 Hold on one second, second, Matt. We have a donation coming in. What are your thoughts on Colby versus Snoozman? (laughs) Thoughts on Colby's skill set? Food cancer. All right. So he's saying food cancer. And he wants to know what you think about Colby Covington, his skill set, and him versus Usman before we get back into that conversation. Okay. Um, I think Colby is... (laughs) I think he's a dick, <laughs> uh, but that has nothing to do with how he fights. I think he's a smart fighter. Um, I don't think he's smart in general, but I think he's a smart fighter. Um, I think he's got great power. I think he's very athletic. Um, I think he could pose a problem for Usman. Um, um, but then again, you got a guy like Usman who's like super, super um, uh, athletic and, and very good wrestler. Uh, I think he can pin anybody against Cage and take him down. Uh, but can you keep him down? Can you do damage on top? Uh, that I don't know. I think I think I think that's a really tough fight for Usman. Actually, um, I think it's a coin toss, and uh, I'd really like to see the fight. There you go. We got donations coming in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to play them at the end of uh, the interview over here because it seems like our donations are a little jammed up. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the donations. We'll play it at the end of the interview. Um, so now let's back up to uh, what we were talking about before here, like the short notice with the UFC. I mean, you must be super thrilled that you're back into the UFC, but at the same time, I mean, your nerves must be through the roof. There is no time to prepare for these fights. So what happens? You're just like, let's just get into a fist fight here and see what happens. Or how do you go about that? Um, I guess when, uh, I'm always, I'm always training. I'm always in shape to fight. Um, I'm not always in the best shape to fight, but I could always go three fives. And that's kind of how it was for my first fight. Like, uh, I, I was almost completely gassed, uh, like three quarters of the way through the second round. Um, and I'm never gassed in a fight. I haven't been gassed in a fight since my second MMA fight. And I've had 32. Um, and it's because I, I prepare, I like over prepare to make sure that doesn't happen. Um, one of the worst things in the world is knowing that you could do more, but physically you just can't, you know? Um, so it was it was a challenge, you know, especially because Barzola is one of those. He's a workhorse in himself. So if if I'm fighting a guy who doesn't, you know, it's not a lot of output, doesn't go for takedowns, doesn't strike a lot, then it could have been easier to fight for me, um, cardio wise. But he's a guy that just goes, 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 uh, which is just like me. Um, so it it was definitely a challenge cardio wise. That third round was, whew, 
I was I was I was gassing for air a little bit. Now, uh, here we are, uh, twenty two nine and zero, and now you are back in CES. You fought for CES before. Does it feel like you're back home? I mean, CES has treated you well. It's in your own backyard here. We got a Connecticut fight. Uh, it's happening uh, com- a Connecticut Convention Center on March 29th this Friday. I'll be there. Jesse yeah. will be there. Um, how does it feel nice. coming back home uh, to CES? I love CES. You know, I if uh, if I'm going to consider um, promotion home and like my the home team, I'm considering. CES MMA and reality fighting because I started with reality fighting. Um, Kip Kolar, the owner, is one of my uh, longtime, longtime friends. Um, he's done a lot for me. Um, so, you know, and I worked for Naga for a little time. So I, I was considered consider reality fighting. And what Jimmy and Pat have done for me at CES MMA is this is incredible. So, like, I, th- I'm not even going to, you know, weigh which one is more important to me because at this point in my career, um, it's just. I can recognize good people doing good things. And, you know, Kip's a great guy. He always does a lot for me. And Jimmy and Pat are incredible guys to, in, in their own right. And uh, I'm just thankful to get the opportunity to fight in Hartford. I tell you what, CES, they do a fantastic job. And now on Fight Pass, even bigger stage for CES. And so congratulations for yeah. that. Um, Thanks, buddy. CES is, they're, they're good people. The Birchfields, um, they've always treated us very well over there, and they put on a show. They've always put on a good show. They always fill up the place. So uh, I'm excited to uh, see you compete uh, this Friday. So now this is happening. You're 22-9-0. Pretty damn good record over here. You've been through every organization. At 34 years of age, battling leukemia, leukemia inside, outside of the cage, just you know, so much stuff going on over here. What do you project in the future? Do you look past these fights and say, okay, this is my goal for the end of 2019, 2020. This is where I want to be. Or do you take each fight one step at a time? Um, I would like to, I would like to fight in Japan. You know, I'd like to fight for, I'd like to have some monetary gain after all this is said and done. You know, I haven't made too much money on, on, in fighting. So it'd just be nice to make a, a couple bucks um, when I leave the sport. I don't know how much time is left. I do know, and I will tell you for a fact, that my body feels incredible right now, Um, much better than it's felt in years, years. Um, I've had an injury that's been really fucking with me for years, and uh, and it feels really good right now, knock on wood. (laughs) I just, I feel like the old map is set physically, and uh, it, it may mean that I could last another few years. It may mean that, I, it's just kind of prepping me for the best showing of my life uh, on Friday, and then maybe I ride off into the sunset. I have no idea, you know. But I'm just going to kind of uh, live, live uh, one day at a time, one fight at a time, and we'll see where it takes us. There you go, Matt Pissett live with the MMA holes, twenty two nine and zero fighting at CES fifty five. It's March 29th this Friday, the Connecticut Convention Center. And, uh, yeah, I can't wait to see this fight. Now, uh, Jesse has some comments here from the chat room. They have some questions. We're going to play some donations as well. Um, good friend, dude, Nick Newell. Dude, I have, I have like, wicked low battery. Okay. Uh, mind if I take, like, 10 seconds to go run and get my charger? Yeah, do what you got to do. Do what you got to do. Right, We're going to pull sorry. some. I'm really sorry. <laughs> no problem. Go get that charger. All right, so Matt Betts, Bissett's live over here, and we have Spider-Man dancing in the background. CES MMA 55. All right, so we're going to be here at this event. Yeah. We're not going to be live streaming during the event, but we'll be live streaming before and after. It's on FS. Um, hello, FS. It's on Fight, Fight Pass. Pass. And uh, yeah, if you want to see it for yourself, you go to Fight Pass or you can come uh, to uh, Connecticut and check it out for yourself. Jesse, get yeah. the, how, the chat room. How's the questions over here? Oh, that's chat's, easy. Chat's so here's the thing I just wanted to bring up uh, with the Streamlabs stuff. They are going through. Streamlabs is not down. Um, the alert box is just not processing them. So at the end, you guys can get in whatever donations you want. And then towards the end of the interview, we'll play them all. Um, whatever questions you guys have, and then we'll play them. All right. So here we go. I'm going to play a donation real quick over here. This is from Jessica G. Jessica G. All right. So here we go. Let's play this donation real quick. And we'll wait for Matt to get comfy. There we go. All right, so this is a donation from Jessica G. You can't stop this idea express. Choose you, motherfuckers. All right, let's see what Jessica has to say. Sorry, I'm late. 
Who's the hot guy you're interviewing? Ooh. ASL. <laughs> so Jessica G <laughs> is smitten by you, Matt. Uh, wants to know who the hot guy is over here and eight sex location. Now, I'm assuming you're, I think you're a married man. I'm not sure. But if you're not, you know, maybe we could set this up. What do you say? Oh, there it is. <laughs> I, I am married. That's funny. There the you go. The lighting in my house glows. That's all right. Sorry. We see you good over here. Everyone in the chat hit me. It's, it's good enough for Jessica G. <laughs> yeah, Jessica G thinks right. you look beautiful. Uh, so there you go. Jessica, thank you for the donation. We'll play some of the donations in a second. Um, okay, so Jesse, what do we got? Some questions. Actually, yeah. let me real quick. Uh, the whole Nick Mule situation. How long have you known Nick for and when did you meet Nick? Uh, I met him for the first time at Kip's basement at, when I was training there. Probably in like 2008 around then. Um, the first time I trained with him, it was it's weird training with Nick for the first time is because all you think about is his one arm. Mm. You can't help but think about it. Um, it's just like you go with people with two arms all the time, and all of a sudden he's got one arm, and you don't know if like you're gonna gonna hurt him or this dude's a murderer, and you just have no idea. Um, he ended up heel hooking me after a couple minutes um, before I really knew what leg locks were, and like he ripped it good, pretty good. It was it was good. It was a good good heel hook, um, and I realized like shook his hand after that. I was like nice. And I was like, all right, this guy's a beast. I'm going to go. So we like went after that for a few more minutes, and it was good back and forth. But um, it's it's a weird thing with him. It's a weird thing with him. Like anytime you go with him for the first time, you can't help but think about his his arm. Mm. Um, unless I think – unless you're like just a stupid, stupid person, and you're just like, Durr, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> um, I, think th- I think that you think about that, you know. It's a, it's a, weird, it's a weird thing. Mm-hmm. Now the whole experience with the contender series and, and some people are still saying that they want to see Nick in the UFC. I mean, what are your thoughts on, do, do you think he deserves to be on the UFC roster? Of course. Absolutely. If you're going to give him a shot in the, in the contender series against a, a high caliber um, wrestler, MMA fighter, out of alpha male, why not just make that on our card of UFC? I don't mm-hmm. get it. I didn't, I didn't understand that fight at all. You know, if you want to test Nick, test him, test him, but don't give him somebody that it should be in the UFC himself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, 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 it doesn't make sense to me. It was bizarre. They seem like they just threw him to the wolves here. It's, it's not like they gave a layup or anything like that. This guy was... No, see, here's, here's the thing. Nick is a wolf himself. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a wolf himself. But stylistically, um, Nick is... Nick Nick's a good striker, but let's not get it twisted. Nick is very good on the ground. He's a great wrestler. You know, He's not going to go out there and, and jab you for for 15 minutes and, and win a decision you know um he's the guy that like comes forward he's aggressive gets a takedown uh gets a finish you know gets a finish quick and if he's going against a, a high level wrestler it's taking a guy down like that is going to be really, really challenging mm. so um i think the matchmaking was it was set up for nick to fail mm. and that pisses me off yeah, it did seem that way. It does. It did seem that way. Uh, yeah. Why make him fight? You, a very good point over there. All right. So Jesse, we got some questions from the chat. Matt Bissett's fighting this weekend or uh, this Friday at CES fifty five. Now we speak to the chat room. Let's see what you guys have to say. Um, to start off, uh, can you tell two joints a viewer in our chat happy birthday? Oh yeah, happy birthday, two joints. Two two joints. Yes, two joints is his <laughs> name. <laughs> happy birthday, two joints. Nice name. All right, there you go, two joints. Uh, Brian Reuter would like to know. Hey, well, he has a couple questions. One of them is, "Do you want a UFC strap?" And then the second one is, "What have you learned from your losses in the UFC?" That's actually some good questions. Uh, having a UFC strap would be awesome, um, but it looks like right now the only way to get that would probably be to like search on Amazon, see if I can get <laughs> one of those plastic ones. <laughs> so, not gonna happen anytime soon. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean that was definitely a goal while I was there. Um, but you know, fighting on six days notice is really, really difficult. And, uh, you know, fighting through, uh, bad injuries is really difficult. And it's just, you know, this shit happens sometimes, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes you wake up in the morning and you stub your toe on the end of the bed and then you slip walking outside the house and you close your hand in the door. You know what I'm saying? Some days you just have bad days. Shit yeah. happens. You just got to continue on through your day, pick yourself up and emerge a better person. Mm-hmm. It's kind of what happened with me and my UFC, uh, my little UFC stint there. Jay Reyes wants to know, uh, do you smoke when you're not training for a fight? Uh, I have never smoked actually. Really? <laughs> yeah. Our whole audience is high right now. It's, it's, I could, <laughs> we're getting a contact high from them. We don't have to smoke. Uh, what else we got from the no, chat? I, I, not that I, not that I wouldn't. Um, I actually, uh, the story behind it was I wanted to be a police officer for the longest time. 
and uh, I just never smoked because I didn't want to have to um, say on the lie detector test that you know I did I did smoke and they're like okay when was the last time you smoked and then I'm like uh, three weeks ago uh, they're gonna be like okay when was the first time you smoked uh, three weeks ago and then it, it just looks weird you know you didn't smoke in high school you didn't smoke in college because uh, you made that decision but all of a sudden when you're 34 years old you're gonna smoke for the first time maybe this guy isn't cut out for the job you know so I just didn't do it for the longest time so wow so what about um cbd products do you use those a lot of fighters are raving about this especially as of late yes that which is funny because uh i don't smoke but i do take cbd products and um one of them i do take has a little bit of thc in it because uh when the thc component works with the cbd apparently it makes your body feel that much better i don't feel any kind of uh high from it because it's very little THC, mm-hmm. but when they work together, um, does create that uh, longer lasting effect and it helps your body that much more and the healing, um, dealing with anxiety and, and whatnot. Um, so I, I do take one, uh, Timeless CBD um, is a, a local one here in Southington. And uh, the guy, I met the guy um, through luck and he's actually become a, a pretty damn good friend. And uh, here, let me get you some, check this out. <laughs> I just wrote down the name, Timeless CBD. Yeah, we'll be reaching out to them after the show. <laughs> Check so, this out. So, okay, wait, 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 wait. Recovery. There we go. Let me zoom uh, in on that. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> that's badass. That's you know great. Jesse Mealy is? Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's Jesse Mealy. That's um, good stuff. For two of his sponsored athletes, and uh, I got um, – both myself this is me with hair right yeah i didn't recognize you at first that's, <laughs> that's crazy. crazy look at the hair <laughs> ah you look better without the hair yeah. that's <laughs> way better um but I, I got us on the cover of that and uh yeah looking good this shit is awesome it's in it's um here it's got a, a ton of bcaas in it and it's uh, cbd infused too hmm. so you got oh. that like right away effect with the bcaas gives you that little high um, like, Oh my God, I feel rejuvenated. And then all of a sudden, like 10 minutes later, you're feeling really calm. And this, this shit is that I, I mean, there's like almost none left. And I got it only a few weeks ago. Good there's stuff. like three or four servings left. I love it. We'll reach out to them after the show for sure. I'm going to play a donation, uh, right now. Let's see. Do your thing. You can stop the Siberian Express. Choose you, motherfucker. All right. Let's see what he got to say here. Vlad. Any relation to Dana White? I see a strong resemblance here. <laughs> All right. Any relation to Dana White? Maybe the size of my nose or the fact <laughs> that, I, that I don't have hair. Uh, but no, that would be awesome, though. I'd, I'd, uh, I'd probably try to hang out with him more. Yeah. What are your thoughts on Dana White? I mean, what, how's your experience? Have you interacted with him much or what was your experience? Uh, yeah, with you him? know what? The only times I got to interact with him was like at weigh-ins or at the events itself. And uh, he's always, you know, he's always kind to me. Um, he's always seemed really approachable and ask your answer questions. Um, uh, nice guy to me, but you know, here's the thing. Uh, everybody like has their opinions on Dana, but this guy is running. He's the face of the UFC. Mm. Um, and when you're, when you're like in charge of hundreds and hundreds of MMA fighters, some of the baddest dudes on the planet, and all you're doing is talking to their managers every day and this and that, like, that's not an easy thing. You know, and, and uh, you know, keeping a, a calm head uh, is probably pretty challenging. Mm-hmm. And I think that he does it pretty well. You know, sometimes he sometimes he's swearing, but like that's who he is. You know, mm-hmm. I respect the guy who who doesn't hold his tongue. If he uh, if he thinks that somebody's a fucking joke, he'll say this guy's a fucking joke. Yeah. Um, and I, I respect that because I'm that kind of guy, too. What And I like what I've I've defended him before on the show saying he's a promoter. What do you expect? I mean, I mean, that's yeah. that's his job. But what are your yeah. thoughts on him kind of throwing some of his champions un, under the bus? And he's kind of he seems like he does favor a lot of these fighters out there. Uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, how he treats some of these fighters? It seems like he's, he's unfair in some situations. Yeah. Yeah, I know that that in itself. Like, I just like to hear what he says. Mm. You know, I'd like to hear what he says. Um, with respect to, uh, in regards to treating certain fighters better or worse. Um, I don't know. I think he's, I'm just trying to get <sighs> you to say something bad about him. That's all. <laughs> no, well, I'm not, I'm not working for UFC anymore. I can say something bad, if I want to say something bad but um, no, no, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer for that. Um, just cause I don't know. He knows a lot more 
than I do. Mm. So yeah, well, can't really answer that one. We're live here with Matt Bissett. He's fighting this Friday. CES 55. Better check it out on Fight Pass. Jesse, any more questions from this chat? I've got three more questions for you. Boss <laughs> Kogar wants to know your favorite color. My favorite color? Yes. Uh, I don't know. You know what? I like pink. I like pink. There you go, boss. There we go. And we got that. We got the CES cancer shirt right here. Fight cancer. Pink shirt yeah. right behind us. I so. got that too. There you go. All right. Uh, Kobe Johnson wants to know, what was your most exciting fight? Uh, one that I was involved in, I'm assuming. Uh, There's so many of them. Uh, so I had a, a fight of the year in the Northeast uh, in 2010. Mm -hmm. And then I had another one in 2011. And then I had another one in 2016. Um, out of all the thousands of fights that happened in the, in the Northeast, uh, mine was the winner three years. Uh, so that says a lot about how I fight, um, you know, and of the guys that were my opponents, none of them ever even got, um, you know, uh, a possible candidate for, a, a, um, a fight of the year performance before or after those fights. So like, I mean, that says a lot about how I fight and, um, and the kind of performance that I, I have, but, uh, I think, I think my favorite fight. I'd I'd have to say either um, my fight with Anthony Caponis, which was my 2010 fight of the year, or my fight with John Benoit, which happened the following year in 2011. I won by guillotine in the second round, um, or my fight with Diego Nunez, which is in 2014 for the Bellator tournament. Let's play a couple of, we got two more donations coming in over here. So let's play a couple of donations and wind this thing down. Matt Bissett live with the MMA holes fighting this Friday, CES 5-5. Okay. Yeah, wait for the, that one to get through. Here we go. Our donations are all buggy tonight. It's like, it's like possessed. It's, it's possessed. Let's see if it goes through. This is from Brazilian American patriotic soldier. If it plays. All right. Well, maybe it's not going to play. We'll wait for that thing to come through. Get another question from the chat. All right. Last question from Jessica G. She says, have you ever had gas during a fight? That's a fantastic. I have gas right now. <laughs> <laughs> There's really no time that I don't have gas. I actually, when I fought um, Daniel Weichel, um, I'm not embarrassed to say it. I had like a stomach issue right before I was going out. And I would be like hitting pads for a few minutes. And I was like, dude, I got to take a shit. And I'd be <laughs> pissing out of my ass. And like and then it, it'd be quick, and then I'd go back, you know, do my thing. I'd wipe, and then I'd go back, wash my hands, and go hit mitts again. Oh and my then God. again, I'd go back on the toilet, and I was like, what the fuck? And like as they're, they're like, Bissette, you ready? I'm like, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and as I'm walking out there, I'm like clenching my ass cheeks. And uh, you know, as soon as the fight started, I didn't think about it once, and it was awesome that nothing really happened. But <laughs> I was a little, a little nervous that something could happen as I was walking out. I mean, nerves are a big part, right? Work, walking out to that cage, I mean, your stomach has got to be in knots on the way to that yeah. cage. Man, yeah. oh, man. We're going to read a couple of donations over here since it's not playing through. Jess, what do we got over here in the donations? Uh, Brazilian American Patriotic Soldier says, uh, I'll come if I don't have to work. Good luck. KO him. All right. So they're saying KO your opponent. Do you and have any predictions uh, for your opponent this weekend? This fight? Uh, I used to make predictions. And then I realized that I'm never right, except for like a few times. So <laughs> I'm going to go out there and do my thing, man. I know how I fight. Um, I hit really hard. I'm, I'm fast. Um, my submissions are plentiful. I'm always going for a finish. So, uh, I, you know, I'm trying to get a, a first or second round finish. Um, but I know for a fact that I have the gas tank to go all five. And I know for a fact that I have the gas tank to uh, submit him or finish him in the third round. So. Um, you know, my tool belt is fucking full for this one, and I can't wait. There we go. All right, I got a donation coming in. What talent are you excited about coming out from your gym? Carlos, David, anyone stick out? All right. This is one shot coop. Uh, I don't know if you heard the question. It says, what? Hold on, repeat that, Justin. What talent are you excited about coming out from your gym? Carlos, David, anyone stick out? Yeah, I mean, uh, so clearly, uh, by saying David, they know of the people in the gym. So I'm not really sure who this is, but, um, you know, uh, Carlos Candelario, uh, was he 7-0 now, I think? 7-0, yeah. Uh, he, he had his last fight in the Contender Series uh, about a month after I had broken my thumb in, my, in the Contender Series fight, and he won a really close decision against um, uh, one of Jose Aldo's 
former BJJ coaches. Um, and he tore his ACL in the fight, and uh, he's been out ever since. But that kid's – he's a fucking – he's a wrecking machine. Um, and I think that he could be in the UFC as long as he, you know, gets 100% healthy. We get him a fight or two, um, you know, uh, not a UFC fight, but a, a fight or two, get back in the swing of things, get get back in there. Yeah, for sure, we could see him at the end of 2019 in the UFC. Um, Carlos Rivera is uh, is fighting this Friday. Um, he's one in four. He's one in four. You look at a record yeah. like that and you're like, oh, okay, I don't even watch this fight. He's fighting another one in four guy. But here's the thing. The, the Carlos um, never really had the proper training. Um, now he does. And he's had it for a few years. Um, this, this dude fucking hits like a truck. <laughs> he hits like a truck and he's got good boxing. Um, he's very athletic. He started wrestling uh, very religiously about a year ago uh, at Underdog. And um, he's fighting a guy that was uh, a very, very good wrestler um, in his youth. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see if uh, Carlos can keep it, hit, keep it standing. But Carlos is he, he, Carlos Rivera, because now we're on second Carlos. Um, he, he, he's, a, he's an exciting dude. And when he, when he scraps, he scraps really hard. So uh, that's going to be a fun fight. Um, also, uh, Justin Valentin. Is two and zero right now. He was uh, like five or six and one. My alarm keeps going off. <laughs> They're blowing you up, popular yeah. person. Um, he was like five or six and one as an amateur. Um, his only loss was to a guy who's undefeated as a pro right now, and it was a, a decision where he sucked. And I'll tell him right now, he sucked in that fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it wasn't like him; he just sucked. But uh, you know, he, he's another fucking. He's a workhorse, dude. He's a workhorse. And um, he's fighting uh, another guy um, who's you know 40 years old, uh, tough, got a lot of experience, but I think Justin's going to put him away early. Um, so both those guys are fighting on the card. Um, and you got guys like Johnny Lopez, who is I think he's the number one flyweight in in the region. Um, if he's not, he absolutely should be. He's a murderer. Um, and you know there's uh, Eric Lee who's retired, but he was a killer. He still trains. Um, there's just there's there's so many there's so many I I'm actually out of a really good school and um, I'm lucky to to have those guys uh, to as training partners. There we go. We and Jesse Mealy as well. She's a female, um, but I'm thinking of guys right now. But she's she's obviously the number one female in the Northeast pound for pound, and uh, Tapology agrees with me. So uh, she hopefully will get her something in like May for CES. We'll see. Sounds like you got some killers over there. We got one we more. Do. Do one more donation over here. Let's play this thing real quick. As my Streamlabs is all jammed up. Wow. They, I tell you, what a night. Uh, Jesse, what, is, uh, what does that donation say over there as we're not? It's from Yes David. He yes, says, David. seven and zero, David is a beast. He's low-key gay. Fact, he loves sucking off BBCs. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Fucking Chris, that's got to be Dave Durow. I have no idea. I don't even know. Dave Dave Durow, uh, Dave Durow's a training partner of mine. He's a fucking funny guy. And he <laughs> says some obnoxious shit sometimes. That, that's got to be Dave. And if it's not Dave, then it's somebody else. It. Well, it sounds like we're gonna have to reach reach out to David to get on him on the show. It sounds like he's an uh, interesting guy. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna cut weight with him on uh, on Wednesday. He's gonna help me out. Oh, good stuff. All right, so Matt. All right, we, we spoke about a lot of things tonight. Uh, big fight this Friday. Why do people? Why should people tune in? Why should people show up to this big event at CES 55? I don't have to tell people to tune in. I've been doing that for uh, 32 fights. If they've seen one of my fights, they know it's the right uh, tuning in is the right thing to do. Um, I've had uh, so 32 fights. Three of them have been fight of the year. Fight of the years, winners, not nominees, but winners. You don't hear about that shit. That's not a normal thing. Um, if somebody will go toe to toe with me, if somebody will scrap, you're going to see a fucking fight of the night. It's just how it is. It's how I fight. And um, I like that chaos. And uh, there's, there's nothing that makes my soul happier than being in that kind of chaos. So, uh, Come out and enjoy it. <laughs> there you go. If you want to see chaos, that's right. It's this Friday, May, March 29th, Connecticut Convention Center. Be there. Don't miss out on that. Now, Matt, if you have any sponsors you want to throw a shout out to, now's the time to do it. Yeah, I got so many of them. I uh, please check out my my Instagram page uh, at Mangler UFC, um, and obviously 
you know, throw it up on the screen right now. At Timeless Ma CBD again. Uh, but please, please check out that um, because we just hit, we had some shirts made and they're totally dope. Uh, it's the upside down whalers symbol, um, which is an M, right? W, M, right? For there Mangler. That's cool um, stuff. Yeah, I'm showing Hartford, it right now. We're the Hartford Manglers. And uh, we sold a, a ton of shirts. Um, but there's uh, sponsors on the back, and, and those guys paid to be on the back. Um, and uh, I can't say enough about my sponsors over the years, whether they're still with me or, or they're not, whether it was one fight or, or 20 fights, whatever. Um, the people that sponsor a fighter, you're, they're going to get, you know, if, if, it's a, if it's a big name fighter, they're going to get a, a lot of, uh, you know, attention from that. But if it's just like a, a small name fighter and you're sponsoring them, you're just doing that because you're a good person. And um, whether you're looking to get something out of it or not, um, it's definitely appreciated by fighters. There you go. All right, we're showing it right now over here on his Instagram. It's Mangler UFC at Mangler UFC. Go check out his merch. His uh, go give him a follow over there. And uh, Matt, thank you very much for coming on, and good luck this Friday. We'll see you at the event. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All right, there he is, Matt Bissett, live on the MMA Holes. Good stuff.